What's up, YouTube? I got a Zerabo in front of me because I need to make a base firmware. Then I can put a firmware for this thing. <sighs> I'm ready. Are you ready? I sure am not. <laughs> we did good. So the firmware we made yesterday worked fine. I did some more tweaks, found a couple other areas to uh, work on, made sure they worked. So I have a working kind of base firmware, specifically for the Bear Mara, uh, this one right here. So firmware is ready for that, but it's not a, a good base firmware because it uh, is a Hamera on it and some other weird things. So what's up, Dereb? So I'm going to go head over to Get Kraken real quick here. So uh, screen capture. So we're in Get Kraken. And down here, I'm going to right click and create branch off of the 2.0.x, which should be uh, 2.0.6. It is. I've already checked this. So uh, we're going to send this to my test branch. So test slash uh, SKR bear dev. 2.0.6. Oop, uh, not a comma. So this is going to be a new branch to work from. There we go. And it's loaded. And if I hop over to here, I should have a blank firmware. Oh, that's not the one. This is the blank firmware. Yep, blank firmware. Nothing written here. So let's go ahead and move the chat window over. So we need to boop, pop that off. Move this over here. And you know what, let's make it one font smaller. That, that helps me out a lot more. Let's go ahead and move the chat window over so I can see all your beautiful things that you say. Oh, put it in the wrong one. Boom. All right. Move in the chat. No problem, Microtech. <laughs> Whew, Richard Crook, uh, you've missed nothing. I just moved over to the new screen here. Well, the new firmware. Uh, basically, yesterday we all worked on this firmware for the Bear Mara, and I did some more tweaking, and I got it to where I need it to be. So we're going to go ahead and basically use this as a guide for a base Bear uh, firmware for the SKR 1.4. So you know, 1.8 motors and stock extruder and stock everything. So, uh, yeah, that's our goal right now is to make a very stock firmware. That way I can base all my other firmwares off of for this. And we know we are the correct one because we are at version 2 billion and 6. So let's scroll down. So creator, Chris. Wargake. And this is going to be SKR 1.4 non-turbo and bear and Pinda. So very basic, very basic firmware for the project that I do. Links are in the description. So we know that we need to have both the serial ports open. What's up, Colton from Texas? And that is correct. We need the correct board, so we're going to right-click and go to Declaration, and we're going to scroll down. I mean, I don't have to scroll down, but we just have to find the SKR 1.4. There it is, BTT SKR 1.4. Let's make sure we don't get that extra space in there. I don't want it. Control V. There we go. We're now set to the base SKR 1.4 board. We do want a custom machine name, and we're just going to call it skr bear what's up paul one extruder 1.75 i'm gonna go pretty quick on some of this basic stuff and i'll stop at areas that uh need extra lookings at so thermistors stock thermistors on prusa machines use the e3d thermistor which is a five and if we go to the chart five is just a 100,000 thermistor uh with a 
whatever fourth point something K lookup, whatever nonsense. The bed uses a number one and the probe uses a number one because there is a thermistor in the probe. The pin does have a, uh, uh, you know, temp thingy in there. So waiting for the hot end to settle is a two. We don't need to wait 10 seconds for the settling. Two is fine. Close enough will be two and two. Chris, just double click a constant VS code. It will, oh, neat. I'm still learning all this fun stuff. 275, so it's going to be 295 plus, yeah, plus my space bars in the way, or my cursors in the way, plus 15, and 120 plus 10. And we need to copy and paste this from the other one because we have PID tunes. I do want to enable the PID edit menu and the auto-tune menu. I did not do that last time, so we will make sure we do that this time. So let's scroll down here and steal our values. So boom, control C. All right, you got, yeah, control C and control V. Oop. I will control C. And of course, I hit Control C twice. Control V. Uh, the plus, so that just the plus fifteen and plus ten are there for the. Um, Keith can better describe it, but there's a max temp warning. So two ninety five is technically the the max temp that you can get to, but there's a plus fifteen uh, little max temp warning error. So there's a buffer, and there's a buffer for the bed. Just reminding myself, and we do want to PID tune the bed, and we will highlight this. Yep, you got to have that buffer. Control C and Control V. Boom. That's the PID tune that I have, and nothing else here should be needed. I changed cold extrusion to 180. I have PLA that will not extrude at 170, so I don't want it to uh, extrude below 180. Uh, remember, we talked about the extrude max length, so if you have a long Bowden tube, you definitely want to increase this to the length of the Bowden tube plus how long uh, a filament path you have from the extruder because then you won't be able to get to your hot end. Uh, we don't need to change any of this fun stuff. Don't need to change any of this fun stuff. But we do need an X, a Y, a Z, a Z2, and an extruder. And we just need to set these to the proper drivers, which our project, we always use 2209s. Everyone should use 2209s. They're glorious little drivers. They run cool. You don't need to have active cooling on them. Uh, uh, S-curve and LA can be combined in this one. Uh, I'm testing it right now. For the base variant, I will not enable S-curve. I will leave S-curve disabled uh, because I prefer to have linear advance around. Uh, since we're using senseless homing, we don't need end-stop noise. Uh, here's something we do need to change. So. Our Prusa systems are 100 and 100. Our Z axis is 400. And our base extruder is 280. Uh, that's just memorized in my head. Max feed rate, we will never get to 300 millimeters per second. 250 is already really high. 200 typically is about as high as we want to go. Um, and this needs to be higher. So I set this value higher. So people are like, why is your max feed rate 80 millimeters per second on your extruder? So let's say I swap to a extruder that is a three to one gear ratio. That's going to be three times the speed. Technically, you're probably not ever going to get to 80 millimeters per second, but there's some buffer. Same thing with the Z. We're never going to be printing with the Z at 30 millimeters per second. Uh, that's limited um, in your uh G-codes. So if you look at Prusa G-code or my G-codes, 
for the uh, profiles for like uh, Prus uh, Slicer or for Idea Maker, your max speed is limited to like five millimeters per second. Um, you definitely don't want to be going 30 millimeters per second on your Z. Uh, default max acceleration, 2000, you know what? 2500, 2500, 2500, 110,000. You don't need to be at 10,000 with a regular extruder, but with a geared extruder, 10,000 is good. This is limited in your uh, slicer as well. So don't worry about that high value there. Um, if you do have like a regular Prusa extruder, 5,000 is more than enough. But if you're using a Prusa extruder, you're probably using Prusa slicer. Prusa slicer already has this value set somewhere um, smart. Default acceleration, 2,000. 2000. I don't know why I'm just deleting the two, but I like hitting all the zeros. And default jerk limit. We aren't using classic jerk. Our default jerk. So if you're using uh, linear advance 1.5 and you have a geared extruder, uh, four or five is a good value. If you're using the uh, regular uh, Prusa extruder, you know, just a regular one-to-one -one geared extruder, nothing fancy. You can lower this down to like two. That should be fine. Again, you can limit this in your start G code. Um, so five will keep. The value here is fine. I will not enable S curve because you can combine these two and technically they should work now, but I am testing it still. So we won't, we will not enable this in my base firmware. Uh, new thing we do now with the SKR, if you're using, so typically if you're using the Z end stop, you'd use this, uh, for your probes. If you have a BL touch or like I'm using a Pinda, I have it connected to the actual probe pin. Most people would probably use the Z end stop pin because that's what you're familiar with, but there's a dedicated probe pin and I'm like, I'm going to use it. So disable this and enable this. So now it is going to use the probe for Z homing. Uh, we need the probe type, which is a fixed mounted probe. Keep going down, keep going down. We don't have any of this stuff. So it's just probing, heck no. So now we need the values for where in space our probe is. Now, in the firmware we made yesterday for the Bear Mara, I unfortunately have some values that are specifically for the Bear Mara, which is a little high. So these are not the correct values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop into, um, I should have these memorized. Maybe Keith has them memorized and he can share me what the values are. But if I just hop over to my Marlin builds folder and my printers and anything, uh, purple bear, sure. And this and this and... Uh, Marlin and this. So I can just steal the values from here. And scrolling, scrolling. I probably could have hit Command F and just found it faster. But so five, 23 and five. Everything else I remember in my brain. So 23, hey, quit. Yep, 23. Yeah, I should have it memorized. Uh, probing margin is 10. That's fine. X, Y, probe speed. Um, I'm going to increase this to 10,000 millimeters per minute. That's fine. Uh, Z probe fast speed is going to be homing feed rate times 4. And we're going to leave the fast speed at half that. Multiple probing, two and one. And our clearance is going to be zero. And our clearance between probes is going to be two. Our deploy distance is zero. Two. And um, so basically this is just saying that we're going to not deploy anything because there's no deploy stow. So we don't need to move it up any higher. Uh, our Z clearance between probes is going to be two millimeters, and our clearance between multi probes is two millimeters. Uh, don't need an offset. Yeah, 
<laughs> it is going to be a little quick. Um, if you have questions, just just stop me. But um, I will have this on my GitHub. As soon as it's done, I will send this to GitHub, and it will be posted on the GitHub for everyone to go through. Let's see here. We want the we definitely want the repeatability test. I mean, you don't have to have it. It's just nice to make sure your probe is working correctly. Uh, we don't need deploy probe stuff. Now, things I do enable now is probing heaters off. Now, that there's a magnetic bed. The Prusa magnetic bed, the way the coils are in there, the copper coils, it actually uh, fudges with the um, probe. So disabling the heaters actually helps uh, have a more accurate probing. Uh, I don't have to have any of this other stuff. I don't have to have any of this other stuff. Um, don't have to do any of that stuff. Um, disable E, false, nope. Now here's the thing that I don't know off the top of my head, which way the inversion is. So let me go ahead and hop back to my firmware here. And this does not have, so false, true, false, false. So we're just gonna keep it stock. So if, let's say your motor, let's say you're, you go to home your X and it moves the opposite direction, change it to true and it will flip. Or if your Y direction is backwards, you set that to false. And we'll figure that all out. Um, same thing with the extruder. If it's not extruding the correct direction, just flip and flop that. Uh, home direction is fine. Our bed size for a Prusa is 250 by 210. <laughs> and our X min in position is zero. Our Y min position is negative four. That's where the purge area goes. And our Z max height is 210. Uh, we do want, let's see, we do want the soft end stops menu. So that way we can disable soft end stops. We do have a filament runout sensor on all of them. Uh, this is going to be set to high. And we do want a runout distance. So one of the things that may happen when you're running a filament sensor is a false positive and a way to kind of, uh, you know, make sure you don't get false positives is you want to, you want it to continue to run out for a little bit. And this is going to be set to two millimeters. So it's continue moving for two millimeters before it shuts off and says, oh, you're out of filament. Now, this is very important. Make sure you don't set that value longer than the distance from your sensor to your actual teeth that are pulling the filament. Because if you go too far, then it won't be able to retract the filament out. So uh, mine does not purge on the bed. It hovers like two to three millimeters out. Uh, it shouldn't do that. That That's not a firmware issue as far as I know. Are you using a BL touch? Because sometimes you have to bring that down a way, way, way bunch. So we've got this set. So the filament runout sensor is set to high on Prusa, which means that it needs to be triggered to be uh, not setting off the alarms. When it is no longer being triggered, the alarm is set. Um, and then here's the M600 code, and then it's going to run for two millimeters after it gets triggered. If it doesn't re-trigger after between that two millimeter section, it will fully engage and say, hey, you're out of filament. And then it'll run the, uh, you know, move the head over to the right hand side and pull out the filament for you and wait for you to load new filament. So that is your little speech on how this thing works out. Uh, bed leveling. For right now, we're going to use bilinear bed leveling. Uh, ba -ba 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 we will enable a fade height. Uh, the height can be set. So we do want to make sure that when we load the machine up for the first time that you set the fade height. Uh, a value of 10 is pretty good. At least that's where we start with. Uh, good. We don't need the mesh validation. That's only for UBL. Uh, we're going to use a 7x7 seven seven grid. That's what Prusa has. 
and we're going to extrapolate that grid beyond. So basically it's going to measure all the points and then wherever it couldn't reach the probe, it'll just extrapolate that beyond. Huh. Send a video of that, Richard. What's up, Mr. Peter? And we do want subdivision. Basically, that will make, um, it'll do some math and calculate points between points. And three is fine. We don't need any more than that. This section we disregard. We do not enable that. We don't enable that. So like if you have um, an ender with the little corners, you could do this. And you can use the corners to define. It'll like move the, move the nozzle to each corner and do all that fancy stuff. Let's see here. And... Don't need a Z probe end. And let's see here. Manual home position. We do have to change that. So let me hop over to here and make sure we change. I believe it's just negative four and zero for X and Y. Uh, not skew correction. Negative three, zero point two. We will not do the zero point two. So boom. Boom, negative three. Let's see, Z safe homing. Heck yeah, we want Z safe homing. Homing speeds are fine. Validate homing end stops is fine. Uh, let's see, we. Do not do, if you want to do the SKU compensation, you can. Uh, I just recommend building your printer square by using a machine square, not a framing square. If we do want the EEPROM settings, and then we do want to auto initialize the EEPROM if there's an error. So uh, very nice to have. So if it has an error, instead of just sitting there and telling you there's an error or not working, it'll auto automatically initialize the EEPROM. So. Good to go. We don't want inch mode. Uh, cool thing now is we can have five preheat labels. So boom, whoop. boom, boom, boom. So we got to label these things. So three, whoop, three. I just lost chat. Escape. Get me out of the. Get me out of the full screen mode. No. No. What do? You, what is this nonsense? I want, oh man, how do I get out of this full screen mode? What kind of nonsense is this? Never touch buttons on your keyboard. There we go, F11. Uh, question for you, is this the base firmware for SK Bear with stock Mark III kit? And Yes, so it's a stock printer uh, and regular SKR board. Yeah, not Alt F4. So three and three and four and four and four and four and five and five and five and five. So the fifth one I label nozzle for nozzle changes. That's going to be 280 and no temp here on the bed. And I guess we can leave ABS, which is actually going to be at yeah, 240 is fine. And I only do my bed to 100. This one will be PET G. And 235. And a bed of 80. And instead of ABS, we'll call this one nylon. Why not? So. 250 and uh, a yeah, 90 C for the bed. Why not? That'll be what we'll we'll mess with that later. But you can now have up to five constants, and I'm just using them. I don't have to use them, but I did. Oh, and my PLA is 190, and my bed is 60. I don't know who uses 70 on their bed. That's weird. Nozzle park. We want nozzle park. And I got to steal the values from the other things. Let's go ahead and delete that. Steal the value from here. Oh, control F nozzle underscore park. There we go. 
and control C, control V, and five millimeter lift. Oh. All right, good to go, good to go. We do not have a cleaning thing. And job timer, I do like to enable the print counter. That'll just give you statistics like how many prints you've made, how many hours you've printed, so on and so forth. Now time the LCD stuff, and then do not forget to change to allow SD cards. The Prusa style is better, just saying. Uh, we do want SD card support enabled. We do want SD check and retry in case there's an issue. Uh, for the encoder, the uh, RepRap 2004 display, enable those two. And we definitely never, ever, forever, never enable the speaker. I don't. You can if you want to. I definitely enable individual access homing, so that way when you're debugging axes and axis, whether it's not uh, homing properly or correctly, we would uh, do it just home the X, home the Y, home the Z. You can still home all. Uh, we do have a discount rep rep smart controller, and that should be everything on this side of the world. We should have everything. Yeah, that's everything. This is all the goodness. Get get up there. Get up there. Let's do a quick, make sure I did everything up. Yep, SKR 1.4 bear pinda. And just to make sure the base stuff is good. Yep, yep, yep. Z stepper is wired independently as we start anything to do in firmware. Yes, the firmware has that enabled already. I already went through that. Uh, basically, you need to make sure that XYZ and Z2 are enabled along with E0. Do not enable E1, even though you are in the E1 pin. No, leave it blank. You have a Z2 driver. Um, so let's go to configuration ADV.h. Let's go to the top and let's take a look. Uh, we don't need any of those things. So this one I have to go slower with because I am not an expert at the advanced.h. So eight. Uh, for the TFT screen, you would scroll down to the full graphics display. So that should be right here. Ooh, I must have missed it. Discount rep rep controller. Keep scrolling. There it is. You would rep rep discount full graphic smart controller. So you'd undefine the old one and then define that one. All right. Um, so this is the thermal protection. Basically, uh, you can have a swing of eight degrees and it won't kick in until it's 40 seconds off of that eight degrees. So good to go. And 20 and two is good. 20 and two is good. Oh, wait, bed hysteresis. The hysteresis goes up. 60 and 20, 60 and 2. Yep, yep, everything else is good here. We don't need that. We don't need PID fan scaling. That'd be a nice surprise. My last SK, I had to order this. Whoa! Well, it's always good to have a spare board. Uh, let's see. Don't need any of this stuff. Ah, this is my new favorite setting, hot end idle timeout. So if you are from Prusa land, you might remember this. So basically, uh, once you've uh, heated up the knot, let's say you did like a filament change, and then you walked away. Uh, Marlin before this would just leave the heaters running indefinitely. So 10 weeks later, it would still be on. Uh, with this, it'll go, oh, nothing has happened in 5 times 60 seconds, so f 5 minutes. It just disables all the heaters. Boom! Boom! Awesome feature. Definitely enable this. This should be just on by default. It's a great safety feature. Um, yep. Everyone should have that enabled. Uh, don't need any fan scaling. Uh, if you have like a mechatronics fan, you would define fan min PWM and set this to 80. Um, but for stock with the Winson fans, 20 is your value for the minimum PWM. Uh, yeah, 30 minutes is too long for me, Keith. I am, I am not a fan of 30 minutes. Ooh, Thailand heat. Something I learned from, uh, Keith the other day is fan, pin, 
fan one pin. Fan one pin. Right, Keith? Fan one pin? So instead of doing P024, I believe, was the pin that we're using, you can just use the universal fan one pin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to comment it out. So fan one pin. Good, good. So yeah, this will make sure that the fan that's plugged into the HE1 pin will turn on at 50 degrees Celsius. Don't have case lights. Don't have this. We don't have dual X. We don't have dual Y, but we do have dual Z. So hit that two right there. Remember when we said we had two Zs? We have to let it know that we have two Zs. We do not have multiple end stops. No, no, no. Dual X carriage. Nope, nope. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Now this is weird. You like skip and do this stuff and then you're like, oh yeah, let's go to some senseless homing. So senseless homing back off is going to be yeah, it's going to move five millimeters before. Uh, oop. Homing bump is going to be zero. Actually, we can leave that two on the Z. And back off post is, uh, is gonna be two, perfect. So basically it's gonna move to the right five millimeters before homing, that way it doesn't just crash into, so let's say like right now, let me let me go to main screen. So this is all the way, this carriage is all the way against. So instead of going crunch and grinding, it's gonna move away five millimeters and then bump and then it's gonna back away two millimeters. So that way it's not pinned up against the axis. So, what's up Robert Reynolds? Yeah. Oh, I did see, Jerry, I did see your thing. I liked it on the Twitter land. Um, quick home, enabled, BL touch. We don't have that on here, so we won't mess with that yet. And we will do the Z stepper auto align. So that's why we have independent Z axes. So, oh yeah, you can't see me because I don't have screen capture on. So let me go back here. Uh, we enable quick home. Scroll back down here to Z stepper auto line. We enable that. And we're just going to go ahead and define our points that we're going to do that from. Boom, we'll delete that. We'll hop over to here and here and scroll all the way up from this firmware we worked on to find that point. There it is. So we're just going to copy these values and then I'll talk about what these values do. Boom and boom. Okay. We're we're here. So I'll show you how to do it live, but basically what it's going to do is it's going to home. It's going to probe at uh 40 and 90. So X40, Y90, it's going to probe, and it's going to head over to Y90. Oh, that's just too far. That's Y90. And 230 probe, and then it's actually going to mechanically tram the gantry to the bed to make it level. Boom, boom. Uh, SKR 1.4 is what I'm using. Oh, man. Sensuous homing is, is awesome. Um, so that's manually baked in if you have a different bed you will manually bake this in i know that there's an auto like stepper line known stepper positions i have i have no idea if that works i've never tried it so oh sorry there's my screen again so we have the values in here and there's this thing here i've never tried this i just do it manually because it avoids the magnets so uh, it won't be measuring over your magnetic bed exactly where magnets are. Uh, I was able to get the uh, speed of Z probe increased. That was an issue. That's that was an issue. I fixed it. That was my boo boo. Uh, we do want to deactivate time, but we never want our Z axis to deactivate. And so basically, it won't, if you have a printer where the Z falls, this will make sure that your Z will never come back down. But for me, I don't like it because I can bump into a Z axis and then it's then going to make it cattywampus again. Then I have to relevel it. Let's just make sure that when you're done printing, it doesn't go, ha, ha, ha. Let me disable that. <laughs> 
you need to put the bit rate. Uh, I am at max. This is what it is. I can make the text bigger. Fortunately, that is a little squirrely on my end, but it works. Um, frequency limits don't have to. Planner speed don't have to. One day I'll figure out if this backlash compensation does anything. Um, calibration G code. Yeah, it's only going to limit to 720. They're working on 1080p now. So that is coming. Uh, I will enable adaptive stuff smoothing because it does make a little lower frequency. You will hear a little less noise if you have that enabled. If you have TMC drivers, don't don't enable that with something. Yeah, well, they gave us 10 users, so that's cool. Uh, I definitely want the LCD info menu because that's where a lot of the cool stuff will be. Uh, nope. I'm using Streamlabs because it's just super easy. Um, LED. We don't have any LEDs enabled, so we're going to go ahead and leave that blank. We do want status message scrolling. Uh, we do want the LCD time back out to the main screen. And da 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 da. Good to go. Yep. Ah, SD finished release. We don't want this M84. We want M84 XYE. That way it does not drop the Z. What's up, Lenny? Uh, 1080p will give you more resolution. It's 720p right now, so you have less resolution overall. You can increase the bit rate, but it's still going to be meh. So let me scroll down to make sure I've copy that code control f m 84 x y yep that is exactly what i did but we also have to do this forgot about that false and good ah uh, this is another thing that we have to do let's change that uh g code e bits so this will home your extruder into the correct area and also disable the X, Y, and extruder axes. Okay, we don't have any power loss detection. I don't do the sorting, you can. Um, scroll along file names, of course. And good to go. Uh, nope, no USB flash drive support, no SD firmware card. Um, nope. Mm -mm. Don't have a graphical display. As you can see, it's all all grossed out because we can't can't change it anyway. Thank you for that, because I'd just be changing stuff. Baby stepping. We want baby stepping. And we want to... Double click for Z baby stepping. And we want that interval to not be so slow. I like a little faster uh, move Z when idle. Our move Z idle is going to be 10. And we're going to do baby step to Z probe offset. So what do we do? We did a bunch of stuff here. We enable baby stepping, which is what allows us to raise and lower that first layer while we're uh, printing. In fact, you can do more than just the first layer, but it's mainly for the first layer. Uh, this is your live Z, if you're from the Prusa world. Uh, but we had to do some stuff. So basically what I did was I allowed a double click. So when you double click the screen, it'll take you to the Z axis moving up and down. And I've set it to 10, which means it'll move at 10 millimeters um, versus moving at one millimeter at a time. So you can quickly move the Z out of the way uh, when you're idle. So neat. And then this setting right here, the baby step Z probe offset, what that does is it combines baby stepping with the Z probe offset. So baby stepping is the ability to change your uh, first layer height while you're printing, but then it'll also combine it with your final Z probe offset. So when you've changed it, it'll that'll be com uh, you know combined with your Z probe offset. So you don't have to keep changing it. Baby stepping is a once per print thing. Z probe offset is a constant. So this combines the two. That way you're not 
changing it in one and then it doesn't do it to the other. It just does it all together. We definitely want linear advance. And we're going to go ahead and set that to zero. And here is where you can do the experimental S-curve. So you can enable it to work with S-curve. Um, it is working. Uh, I haven't really tested it, so I don't know if it works. But it's there. Uh, probing margins we don't need to mess with. Uh, nope. And nope, we don't need to mess with any of that stuff. Don't need to mess with arc support. Direct stepping, so this is a new feature they added that is basically uh, how uh, Clipper works, where it off puts all the calculations to the MCU of a Raspberry Pi. So you enable this and do all this fun stuff and you're good to go. So if you really want to mess with it, there's the GitHub. Uh, what's up, Vince? So you can take a look at it and figure that out. Probe target, we don't need. We don't need to change any of these values. Uh, we do want to change our buffer sizes to 32 and 32. We have a, we can have larger buffer sizes, but with that, we need to change some things, which is going to be down here. Yes. So because we increase the buffer, um, some things can go a little bit askew. So normally if you send something like a kill command, it'll try to finish, uh, all the stuff in the buffer, then it'll do the kill command uh, enabling the emergency parser tells uh, the printer that at any time if it sees a kill command kill the printer so it will it doesn't care that it's 20 lines behind the next move it just does it so definitely enable your emergency parser if you increase your buffer size uh, s curve does work um, it works great uh, i have prints to show the difference it's just a lot of people aren't printing prints that do anything and teaching text video, which everyone keeps uh, quoting, he did it wrong. And um, yeah, what's up, Ahmed? Not much. Uh, in the SD session, enable countdown. Countdown when you have an SD plugged in, but counts up if you upload from. Um, counting, you can enable M73. That should work. So that will take what your G code does for the timing. Um, I have had it work and not work. So what's up, Viking? We don't need any of those settings. We don't need extra fan speed. We don't want, we definitely don't want firmware retract. I mean, we can, I mean, not a big deal, but we definitely want the advanced pause feature. Yeah, it, that's the thing is, again, S-curve is, is kind of weird. So speed doesn't really matter it's changing the accelerations at curves um and most people aren't printing a print that can show it so and you're not printing a print that's big enough to show it and they're also not setting things correctly i'll, I'll have to do a video on it because the teaching tech video is so bad and it gives people a weird of how it works and what it does versus what it actually does Uh, 0 0.9 do make a difference. Again, um, I don't think people know what they're looking at uh, when they want to see a difference between them. And I'll, I guess I'll have to show that too. I've shown it in the Prusa group. So if you've ever been to the Prusa groups and you've seen the prints, if you print a round object where typically there would be vertical banding uh, with a zero with a 1.8 degree motor, those are gone with the 0 0.9. But people are looking for something else. Um so yes, 0 0.9 does do a difference. So uh, uh, there is a difference. It just, I don't think anyone really sits down and tries to figure out what that difference is. Microtech. He did things right, but yeah, he did it right, but out of order. Like he basically set up for, it's it's basically has such a slow uh, jerk setting that there's no point it's never going to accelerate or decelerate fast enough with those low jerk settings. So when you have um, when you have junction deviation tuned for a low speed, and then you sit there and you try to increase with S curve, then they they don't they don't do anything. They counter count, they counteract each other. So you're you're not you're not making enough jerk to really take into account the faster acceleration you're getting. So you have to tune it for the acceleration first, not Back, not the other way. You don't tune 
uh, junction deviation first, then tune your accelerations and speeds. So, yeah, it's just kind of weird. You really want to print with everything old school first to get a, a base value, and then you're going to tune your uh, accelerations first, then your speeds, and then junction deviation. But what, but Mido, what are you looking for? Again, the difference with a 0 0.9 versus a 1.8 has nothing to do with, with, uh, with, uh, like junction deviation and S curve. And the video is not going to show me the difference. I don't need a video. I need a still image to show you the difference it does in the print quality. And again, that's where it gets weird is you have to know what you're looking for and why. Uh, let's just steal everything from the advanced pause menu because I don't need to redo this a million times. I'm going to make this smaller so I can just find it faster. There we go. Advanced pause. Stealing everything from advanced pause that I did. Control C. And pasting it here. Uh, nope. I'm making a base firmware. This is for... This is for the base SKR project, so everyone can then go through and make whatever nonsense they want with it. So these are all the settings I have. I went over it yesterday. Um, just make sure to park on head pause and film it load unload. Let's see here. What else? Oh, we're at the drivers. Oh, in these drivers. All right, X current is 500. And this is gonna be 200 for the homing current. And this is going to be 600. And this is gonna be 250 for the homing current. And the Z is always gonna be 450s. 450. Uh, yes, on a Prusa printer, I, I have this one actually 0 0.9 on the X and Y. And the extruder axis, the base is 550, and it's gonna be 32 micro steppings. It's the only change there. And scroll down. We do want stealth chop. We do want to have this as a 24 volt system. And definitely want one day I uh, will enable and show people how to tweak this hybrid threshold. I loved messing with it. It was fun having it. We want sensorless homing. The base values I found that work right now are 80 and 80. Uh, we do want improved homing reliability. We want home phase. We don't need it for the Z. So negative one would disable that. So these are your phases for uh, X and Y. And square wave stepping. And then there's some other stuff we have to scroll down and find here. Scroll down and find some things. Not the photo G code, not the laser spindle. There's something else that I remembered I have to find. And I will find it again. No coolant, no filament with sensor, no power monitor, no coordinate systems. Um, No volumetrics, no workspace offsets. And let's see. Nope, nope. It's over here somewhere. Ah, there's a startup G code here. So M17Z just enables a Z axis. So as soon as you turn on the printer, the printer will then um, lock the z-axis so it doesn't move up and down easily. Don't need g-code macros. Um, I will enable the custom menus, but there's still something else I want to find. Ah, here we go. We need host action commands. And we need host prompt support. So thank you, uh, Discord, because uh, someone on Discord. Oh, man. Someone on Discord. Uh, let's see if I can find the, the person's name. I'm horrible with names. 
screenshots. And I gotta find the Discord message that someone sent me. Oh, dang, I didn't save the name. So with host actions command and host prompt support, um, what that's gonna do is let's say you are running Octoprint and you end the print. If you don't enable these, then it's going to basically rehome and start printing in midair again. Um, so definitely have host action commands and host prompt support. That way the host can control the printer. So if you have Repetier, uh, Repetier or Octoprint or whatever you want to use to connect, uh, Raise Connect or whatever, um, you need these in order to uh, control the printer correctly when it does things like pause or power off or uh, kill commands and stuff like that or end print. Uh... Yeah, so with the NeoPixels, I'll do a video just on NeoPixels because there's a couple things like you want the... You want the uh, uh, the DC DC board, and you want the board from uh, Printed Solid to enable the correct uh, voltage and regulation, so that way it works correctly. Um, that's a whole video upon itself. And this printer needs NeoPixels. There's actually NeoPixels slid into the the T slot over there. Um, so host action commands have to be enabled, and host prompt support has to be enabled if you're going to. Um, uh, do all the magic that is uh, running uh, Octoprint or uh, Repetier server. Uh, cancel objects. You can enable that if you'd like. Uh, we don't need joystick. And I think that should be it. Those are the two that I missed last time. Uh, you definitely want uh, the host action commands and the emergency parser. Um, those are 100% necessary in life. So definitely take care of yourself and make sure that you're doing that. So let's scroll back up to the custom commands because I'm just going to copy and paste my custom commands. Nope, oh, I went too far. Went too far. Where is the custom commands? Ah, oh, there they are. Shrinking it back down. We're just going to... Highlight that and delete. Hop over here and custom user menus. There we go. And control C. And I have a list of all these on my GitHub. There we go. Boom. Done and done. Okay, the next thing we have to do is make sure to go to uh, the platform IO and change this to LPC 1768. Uh, all the custom commands are on my GitHub, which the link to the GitHub is in the description. So and let's go back here. Let's go back to configuration of H. So we have a stock printer, should be good to go. And boot screen, yes. Zero, negative one, 250,000. And SKR bear, correct board. Do really have uh, fix, did you already fix the Z pin? Ooh, I have no idea what you mean by fixing the Z pin. And extruder one. Okay, this should be it. So we're going to go ahead and build. Yeah, you don't have to do the pin, if that's what you mean. And if you don't have to do anything in pins now, 2.0.6. Uh, let me scroll down that real quick. So right here, after all this stuff. So you're going to undefine Z probe uses min end stop. And you're going to define use probe for Z homing. And that's it. You don't have to do anything. No more editing the pins file. Woot, woot. So we have done everything. We're going to see if this builds. We're going to go ahead and uh, uh, wish upon a wooden workaki. And hit the build button.
Da, 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 da. I wish I had ed, uh, building music. Like, there needs to be some kind of music I play while the firmware builds. Do, 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 <laughs> yeah. IntelliSense index rebuild. I'll take a swig of water. And then once this finishes, I'm going to push this. I mean, once it finishes, I'm going to push it to um, GitHub if it if it finishes, like if it works and it passes. And then I'm going to um, 44 watching, only 10 likes. That's uh, sacrilege. We had 100 people watching yesterday. People just aren't as interested in more. Oh, 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 oh. We had a fatal error. What is my fatal error? Feature TMC util. What? What? What is this? Um, I have not messed with it. Yeah, we'll try that again. Garbage can. Build again, because that's not something that I have any idea how to fix. Do, 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 do. Yeah, you unpack. You know, I've, I've had more luck on the first try than not. You know, most of mine tend to build on the first try, unless there's something just glaringly out of place. Um... Needs to give me better errors. Because that's, I think, the hardest part when you're messing with Marlin is when it gives you an error and you're like, uh, uh, what do I do? Let's see if we get further this time. It looks like it's getting further. What's up, Fotis? It's got casitas and miatos. Oh, I have no idea what that means. But yeah, it's definitely going further this time. So that's good. And um, uh, Keith, you have to teach me. Oh, oh, high was not declared. Oh, I think it needs to be all capitals, doesn't it? Find filament runs at high pin state, indicating that filament is not present. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's see. So it should be filament runout sensor. Where there it is. I'm guessing H I. There we go. Boom. Gotta do the caps, baby. See, it's all about them caps, y'all. <laughs> yeah, so Keith, you need to come on stream one day and teach me how to use Marlin Auto Build. Because I have no idea what it does. I know it says Marlin Auto Build. But what does it do? I don't know. I've never seen a video on it. <laughs> Maybe I should see, is there a video on YouTube for Marlin Auto Build? See if I can find it. It's simple, it, dude. I looked at it and it wasn't simple. What are you talking about? Marlin Auto Build. Let's see if there's a video. Oh, someone did a video two five months ago from it. Ten months ago with it. Huh. There are two videos. Hey, success! There are exactly two videos on it. Let's do a stream now. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, we're not doing it right now. I just finished that. 
Yeah, Fonus is also yelling. Yeah, get to hit our buttons. Uh, yeah, you do need to do a stream with me, Keith. So let's hop over here. And something that we need to do is we're going to go to uh, Documents and GitHub and Marlin. This is where everything goes. And Path.io, Build, LPC 1768, and Firmware.bin. There is the firmware we just made. Copy and go back, go back. Eh, you know what? We're just going to leave it like this. We're not going to do a compiled bin full file for it. So let's go over to Git Kraken. And we're going to view the changes here. So, yep, yep, yep. We're going to stage all the changes. And initial commit. Stock SKR bear firmware. I can't type for crap. Marlin 2.0.6, use at your own risk, because this is a developmental branch for now. Commit three changes, and we're going to push that and submit. And push successfully. So if I hop over to GitHub... Oh, well, I should probably go to my GitHub, my repositories, SKR Bear Marlin. And if I scroll down, there should be a dev. Yep, there it is. SKR Bear Dev 2.0.6. So we now have the base firmware to work off of. Woohoo! Okay. Let's hop back over to Git Kraken. And we're going to right-click this, and we're going to create a branch off of that. And we're going to call that my builds and backslash SKR Zerbo 320 2.0.6. Boom. So we should have the exact same firmware now loaded. Yep, same firmware is loaded but it is now a completely new thing to mess with. Oh, wrong screen. This screen. So we now have the same firmware we're working with, but in a new area so I can mess with it. So let's make it work for this Zerabo. Let's make it work for the Zerabo. So we're gonna call this, instead of bear, it's gonna be Zerabo. Zerabo 320. And uh, BMG Moss for Mosquito. And that should be all the fanciness on there. Uh, scroll back. So we're going to call this SKR Zerabo. Yeah, just SKR Zerabo. This has a turbo board in it. And scroll down. Let's see. What are some changes we need to do? We need to change the height. And the thermistor is different. This has the slice thermistor, which is 45? No, not 45. Where is the slice thermistor? Slice, slice, slice. Command... F slice. There it is. 67. 67. Uh, ba, ba, ba. <laughs> Zero cool coding. Yeah. Uh, good. Everything else should be good. Technically, the max temp now is higher. Um, you know what? I will test it on this one for me. 350 should be the max temp that I can do. Uh, the fan shroud will probably melt. Everything else should be able to withstand 350. So, 350 it is. Uh, that's correct. PID tunes. Um, I will do that on my own. Uh, everything else should be good. Uh, feed rate, feed rate. Yep. Mm -hmm. And... 
I will enable S curve acceleration for myself because I want to test it some more to see if it works. Uh, probe is correct. Multiple probing is correct. Ability test. There are a couple things I want to change. Um, this I don't know. I don't know. So we need to hop over to GitHub. And let's go ahead and go to my Zerobo build. So my builds, my Zerobo 320, and Marlin. Let's make this thing big. And let's make the font bigger. Configuration.h. And something I know I need to change is the X and Y Magoos. Let's see, yep, so I need 200 on the X and Y. 8.30, but what I need to do here is, where is that magical thing? Um, where is it? I need the direction though, so it's all false and a true. Okay. All false and a true. So now I got my directions correct. Let's go back up and change my uh, steps per millimeter is going to be 200 because that is 0 0.9, 0 0.9, and 830 because that is a BMG, and 250, yep, yep, max, default, we've got an e-jerk of 5, and junction deviation is fine, s-curve acceleration is enabled, uh, any need to change excels for tall printers? Um. I change all that in G code. So I use Idea Maker. It's in Prusa Slicer. I lower those values in that. These are your max values that you're doing. So 2000 is fine. Uh, Marlin is working, and they've mentioned that they're going to work on a code that as the Z height goes up, it will lower the acceleration values. But I will say that the uh, Zerabos are freaking sturdy as heck. So I have not noticed any issues printing tall with the same settings I normally would use. Um, so I got care of that. Uh, we got the changes to that. Uh, our maximum position is 320. And filament runout sensor, do I have that in? I do have that installed on this one. So we'll find out if that code works or not. I have to change anything. Bilinear is fine. I'd change the wiring on all printers to match Marlin's stock direction. Yeah, you can do that. Um, ch -ch 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 rapidly beyond grid, that's fine. I don't think I have to change anything else on this printer for this, because I'm just using a regular screen. Um, the preheat labels are fine. No need for that stuff. So we need to go here and change some things, because we enabled S-curve. So we need to go to... Um, third. Oh, we have another thing. Uh, there's a mechatronics fan and a delta fan. Is that a delta fan? Nope, that is not it. That's a TH3D fan. So that is fine where that's at. Um, our extruder auto fan max speed. So I, I accidentally on purpose installed a uh, 10,000 RPM fan, um, 200 is full speed for me. So if you want to trim how fast your uh, fan is, if it's too powerful, uh, yep, I recommend to lower that if it is if it is bad. So uh, I need to find the linear advance. Command F, linear. There it is. We need to S curve. And then I just saw that there was a new value for, uh, what is that nonsense? There's a new value for your spread cycle. There's a 0 0.9 stepper chopper. So we'll try that. Control C. And we'll change that to chopper 0 0.9 step. Why not? I've never done it before. Uh, these are all going to be new, so I'll set these myself. And good to go. Do I need to change this value? Hmm, I don't know. Keith will have to tell me. Okay, 
That should be all the changes I need for the Zerabo. Um, there's nothing else fancy on here. It's got the turbo board. Oh, I do need to go to platform IO, I and I. Changes to LPC 1769. And I will hit the garbage can to wipe everything. Because when you change environments, you want to wipe things. Oh, man, water is delicious when you're thirsty. See, I think it did it. Yep. So let's go ahead and build. What year it is? I don't know what year it is. I think it's 2020. At least that's what I heard. So I need to take the SD card out of here. Put the SD card in here. And we'll see if we can get this uh, Zerabo running with the new firmware. And then one day, Keith will teach me how to use Marlin Auto Build. <laughs> Definitely need a theme song when this is going on. Do do do. Do do do. Building in release mode. We got our good luck wooden work hockey. I got some filament bits in my T slot. Zerbo sends you little T slot covers too, and I did not install them because I was weird. Oh, plus one. That, yeah. Um, I. We'll have to figure out how to pipe that in. I need to get my 3D printed speakers and get them uh, doing their thing. Man, this build takes forever. Why must the LPC 1769 take so long? Do do. Get mine up, please. Huh. Mustard faced. I like mustard. Mustard's delicious on certain things. On a sausage, on a hot dog, delicious. Honey mustard. Amazing. Flay the bumblebee. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So many cool things that we could do for music that can happen while it's building. Uh oh. Keith is like, he's on it. So you're the weird one. All right, it built. So let's go ahead and hop over to a clean desktop. And actually, this should be correct. So path IO build LPC 1769 444. That's the one we built. Why isn't my thumb drive showing up? Or not my thumb drive, my micro SD card. There it is. Firmware is going to here. Delete that CUR file. Go back. Eject. And 
and remove the SD card. Sticking the SD card in the slot. And let's go here. And I'm going to move this chat window over to here. Boom. And let's go ahead and go back to main. We're back to main. I have put the SD card in. The firmware is in there. Ugh. Ugh, there we go. Let's put that more on the screen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. There's the button. It has booted. Do, 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 do. Oh, Marlin 2.0.6. The Z motors have activated. Boop, boop. Z axis moves correctly. Dude, this Zerbo is it is gorgeous. And it prints really, really well. And is my quietest printer by far. So, all right. Motion. And home the X. Let's see if our homing works. Yay! Let's home the Y. It homed. Uh, now let's home the Z, so we're going to grab our fancy tool. This bad boy. This is what I use to make sure the pin to probe. Oh, come on, get off my face. Oh, now it doesn't want to. Whoop, there we go. This is what we use. It's metal. It's a ferrous metal. So we're going to go ahead and go to motion and home Z only. And, yep. Yeah, it's senseless homing. So let's go ahead and do an auto home. Hey, bada bing. So let's do something else. Let's go to motion and let's go ahead and align the Z axis. So this is that thing I was talking about where it's going to probe on both sides. So let's make sure that works. It's going to probe this side, then the far side, and then it will fix any cattywampusness. Yep, that side was low. So it raised that side up. And I'll do that, I believe, three times. No, Dan. There we go. All done. Now let's do motion and let's make sure the probing works. But first, let's set a fade height. Make sure to always set your fade height. I start at 10. And I'm going to hit level bed, make sure the speeds are correct. Yeah, that's better. Much better. Uh, the issue with ramming it to the top is your prints could be off skew. The holes could be off skew. Uh, and the bed is what you want the extruder to align to. You Whatever the top is doesn't tell you what the bed is. So if one rail is a little skinnier than the other or one bearing is thicker than the other, your bed's going to be skewed. Uh, typically, you know, left and right. So it's going to be, you know, skewed. Um, so the top doesn't tell you anything. So I could speed up probing. I, I'm not going to. Uh, let's see. Anything else I want to do? Test. I don't think I want to, t I don't think I need to test. There, I don't think there is anything else I need to test. I think it just works. I will have to figure out the first layer height. Um, 
Oh, that's a funky nozzle I have on there. I forgot I put that funky nozzle on there. Trying to make it into real course. Ooh. Yeah, essentialist homing on Core XY is a lot harder because you need two motors to sense stalls. Not the easiest thing. Two motors at the same time, mind you. Not not just one. Um, Marlin did add better um, stuff for um, Core X Core kinematics, um, essentialist homing. So. Dun, 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 So the other thing I have to check is, oh, I know the extruder motor should turn the right way. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and move that up. There's a clump of filament under there. Uh, do you ever see the need for setting up machine for three mil filament? Uh, nope. Only because I have so much. Oh my god, that's so gunky from all the TPU. There we go, that's better. I want to review the stream settings again. I want to implement. Yeah. Yeah, the heater turn. Oh yeah, let's make sure the heaters work. So let's go ahead to temperature. And oh my god, I have five different preheats now. Let's go ahead and preheat for PLA, and uh, we'll do both. So preheat the bed and the nozzle for PLA. And the nozzle is going to heat up quickly because this is a Mosquito Magnum with the 50-watt heater cartridge. Um, yeah, it's already at, it's already at 60 degrees. The fan turned on. Yep, it's blowing air. Let's see. Ooh, why am I sleepy? <laughs> you have like a hundred pre that's weird. Why would you have a hundred preheats? You silly banana peel. And we're at to temp. So that's good. I guess we can check to see if the motor is spinning. The cr it will spin. So let's go ahead and go to move axis, move extruder, and move it 10 millimeters at a time. Put my finger there. Yep, it's spinning. I really need to put that visualizer back on. Yep, it's spinning. Um, do I have anything else I want to... Anything else that's cool? If I just leave it alone, it'll eventually turn off, which is fun. Um, <laughs> all right, so we did it. Um, base firmware is loaded uh, to um, GitHub. So link is in the description to the GitHub. So if you want to see the base firmware that we made with all the settings... Uh, this video will be replayable shortly. Um, and then I'm just going to keep on testing the firmware in about, hopefully in about a week, I will update all of the firmware to 2.0.6. Uh, we'll have to have Keith show me how to do that. Um, he's trying to square up. Don't make me come over there with my 65 pound machinist square. Thing's heavy. I mean... I don't want to bang it around, but that thing is heavy. All right. On that note, any other questions before I disappear? I guess I should hop over to uh, Git Kraken and send this firmware as well. Few changes. Initial commit. And we're going to go ahead and talk about how this is Marlin 2.0.6. For SKR Zerobo 320 with SKR 1.4 Turbo 
Of course, I can't spell for poop. Scare Turbo, Pinda, uh, BMG, Mosquito, Magnum, um, 10 millimeter edition. And stage all changes and commit three changes and push and submit. So now they're the Zerbo and the uh, developmental build are all up. They are all there. Uh, when is the next stream on the second channel? Need some game night. Oh, soon. Um, today's Tuesday, probably tonight. I don't see why not. So, probably tonight. Um, I just need to have a real dinner. And, uh, like, five minutes to my, like, an hour to myself. Um, just to relax. Watch some cartoons, you know? It's like a cartoon day, right? My money is on Chris. <laughs> oh, man. So cool. And the temps are nice and stable. And it should turn off after another couple more minutes, which is awesome. Um, I won't run a test sprint on this because... Um, what's up, Belgian? Mr. Davey. It, Marley, Marlin time is over, man. I just got it running. Printer works. Homing works. Um, probing works. Everything works. It works. It works, it works. So on that note, if anyone has any questions, let me know before I disappear into um, a pumpkin. I turn into a pumpkin at 5 o'clock p.m. Central Time, which is in three minutes. <laughs> uh, yes, 3.8.1 uses LA 1.0. It just works. Oof. Um, you get lucky. Mind you, I'm coding the exact same firmware for the exact same printers I've already have. It's not like it's that hard. More upgrades to the Predator? Oh, it never ends. It never ends. It never ends. Oh, this is the Zerbo Z-mounts. So if you head to uh, Zerbo.com, you can see all the loveliness that is uh, the mounts. This is 10 millimeter rods and uh, 10 millimeter uh, block bearings on the X carriage or Y carriage. Um, why does my Y axis? Uh, disable crash detection. Uh, it gives lots of false positives. Also check your belt tension. So run self test. And then go to uh, the menu and then go to the very last one where it's like support or whatever. And look to see what your belt tension values are. And make sure that they are within the values. Like 265 plus or minus 10 is typically good values to be within. If it's way too low or way too high, it could be just, you know, too loose a belt, too tight a belt. Uh, bad bearing, out of alignment, axis out of alignment. Um yeah. Those are all options. First time in chat. Yeah, chat's a good time. So it is one minute. One minute. That's all I got left. And then pumpkin time. Oh, I got bit by so many mosquitoes. Always wear pants surround when you're around mosquitoes. And I am way tan. That is that is oh gosh. Tan. Zero fifteen. Nice. Yeah, fifteen millimeter rails would be nice. MGN fifteen. Are you gonna go with uh, C, the compact, or H, the regular ones? Hey, what's up, Mars Gizmo? Yeah, that is a that's a crazy difference. And uh, yeah, this is the sun. This is what the sun does to you. <laughs> all right hey and it turned off hot and idle timeout so the timeout worked that's that's my favorite thing yeah look at those palms palms are white arms are tan 
So, all right, everyone. Good night. I'll probably be streaming later and uh, on the other channel, the FDM Lounge. Any tall... Uh, I have Zerabo pro, uh, Idea Maker profiles. Um, should be on my GitHub. Should be. I'll double check. I actually need to do more GitHub stuff. So, on that note, everyone have a wonderful evening. Firmware works. Download your 2.0.6 and happy printing. I think. <laughs>